Eastern Libertarian, and he's the former Eastern Vice Chair of the Libertarian Party. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jackie. And I'd like to thank the, uh, the other two, Piotrowskis and Jane and everybody else for organizing this. Thank you all for coming out, especially those of... Especially those of you blowing your horns. No. Uh, no, especially I'd like to thank you guys who brought your guns because you're keeping us safer here today. Right yeah, I found out this morning that there's a demonstration going on in Caracas, Venezuela, protesting the dictatorship of Hugo Chavez. So I just uh, I used to live there, so that's what got my attention. Uh, yeah, I really feel for those people, and I hope uh, you do too. That we can all stand together for liberty. It brought to mind uh, the Venezuelan Constitution has a clause, and that clause says that you have a right to demonstrate as long as you are peaceful and unarmed. That's their constitution. Well, back in February of 2010, the college students decided to take that clause seriously. And they went out and demonstrated against Chavez's uh, communist government. They were even they were even holding up signs that said unarmed students. Guess what they got? They got the rubber bullets. They got the tear gas. They got the water cannons and they got the nightsticks. Come here. Well, I look around, I look around, and I say, well, I don't see any rubber bullets flying or any uh, water cannon or any tear gas. Could it be because people are armed here? <laughs> so hopefully that will make a difference. The difference here is that in the United States we can resist. And we have different ways of doing it. For example, last Saturday there was a gun buyback in Ben Salem over in Bucks County. And I had the pleasure of going there. Something that's not captured on film was I happened to walk up on a, a man named Frederick Heron, who is the Director of Public Safety. What a misnomer, yes, exactly. Um, he made the mistake of um, allowing me to start an interview uh, with him, and I asked him, um, well, I heard you say to the other news reporter there that uh, people break into houses, and they steal guns, and then they use those guns in crimes. And I said, well, aren't you basically admitting that the police can't protect us? Yeah, it, it, uh, it, so why do you want to take away our guns? And he said, well, if that's the way the interview is going to go, no thank you, and walked away. <laughs> so, no respect, no respect. No, but you know, it's funny because I, I, I turned off the camera and started to walk away. He starts talking to my back, and he starts talking about the Second Amendment. He says, well, Second Amendment says militia. So, you know, that's about a militia. We don't have a right to have guns. It's about arming a militia. We are the militia. I'm like, this is why we have to resist this, people. They don't want reasonable gun control. We are the militia. Yes, we are. I agree with you. What I'm saying is, they don't want any reasonable gun control. They don't think we have a right to any guns. They want to take our guns. So they can microchip us. They say, they, they, I think it, we need to watch these gun buybacks because, you know, now they might be voluntary. And now the people that get a few bucks might like it. But you know what? If they're going to start mandating turning in guns, how are they going to do it? The same way they do these gun buybacks. They're practicing, yes. Or incrementally, somebody said. I've heard the word gradualism used, too. So, by degrees. By degrees, yes. How can we resist? How can we resist this? First, we have to start with some basic principles. If we're going to stand up to this tyranny, we have to make it a principled stand. And that means we might have to change our thinking a little bit sometimes. If we're going to say, let's not register guns, what principle are we standing on if we have already agreed to register our cars, our houses, and even ourselves when we get driver's licenses? We walk around saying, oh, please, master, can I drive my car? Oh, please, master, can I? Can I? Yes, can I drive my car? Can I own a house? Oh, please, can I uh, practice my profession? All this licensing establishes a precedent. Matter of fact, uh, 
uh, there's an old video out there from I think 2002. Wayne Lapierre of the NRA was interviewed by Phil Donahue. Big boom for Phil Donahue. But anyways, no. But Phil Donahue mopped the floor with him on the driver's license issue. Well, we can drive, license you to drive. Why can't we license you to carry a gun? It's a privilege, not a right. So, you know what? We need to establish principles. If we're going to talk about gun confiscation, you're going to say, no, you can't confiscate my gun. Well, what principle are you standing on when you've already agreed to let them confiscate your money? Okay. I'm talking about taxation. Yeah. Taxation is theft. Right. When you let them tax you, you have no leg to stand on when they say, give me your gun. Yeah. That's the way it is. Good. Good. We've got to pull it together here. Now, I'm not going to advise anybody about what to do or what not to do. I've known people to go to prison over taxes. I'm not going to advise people what to do. I'm going to say this, though. Free your mind. Yeah. We have to understand that when we pay those taxes, we're paying for tyranny. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to end it. Stand on principle. Yeah. But let me do a little self-promotion. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Self-promotion. Uh, please read my blog. It's called The International Libertarian. And uh, you can uh, find it on the internet at uh, The International Libertarian. Just one word. The International Libertarian dot blogspot dot com. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.